This is CBC Radio 1. It is nine minutes before eight. Toronto lawyer David Leposky truly wants to make the TTC the better way. David is blind, and he's been trying to get the Transit Commission to announce each stop along its routes. It took him over ten years to convince the TTC to make those announcements on the subway. Now he wants similar announcements made on bus routes as well. But the TTC is refusing to go along, so Leposky has filed a complaint with the Human Rights Commission. Yesterday we talked to him about his one-man campaign, and then we asked to hear from you. Judy King. Uh, I am horrified by the response of the TTC to your caller's situation. As you said, it would seem to be the human, the right thing to do to announce the uh, locations and at zero cost to the TTC. I'm horrified, and I think I'll be sending a message to the TTC that they should do better things with their money. Like I'm leaving. This is a prime example of corporate idiocy. The question here should not be addressed to the TTC or unions or anybody else. But at this point in time, there's two people that need to be asked this question, Howard Moscow and David Miller. And the question needs to be, why are you allowing stupidity like this to waste our money? We just got a billion dollars from Paul Martin for the TTC, and how much of that are we going to spend on lawyers fighting something that we all know is right? Stop the stupidity, and there'd be lots of money for the programs that we really need. Oh, hi, Andy. It's Paul Nickel calling. These guys are driving a bus at the same time as they're having to call out these announcements. I agree it'd be very desirable for them to announce the street names or uh, stop names, but there's only so much they can do, and I, they only have to do one thing. I'd rather have it be driving. It's Richard Carson here. I spend uh, most of my day um, on the subway. And uh, I've got to tell you, the the new announcing system is really annoying because I'm an avid reader, and they have to announce every station twice. I I think that maybe the blind people should just get themselves together to to get attuned to waiting for the guy to say it one word. Think where? Eglinton instead of this this double announcing. Hi, Andy. It's Sir Sean Madsen. I had a similar instance with, as it was then called, Canada Employment 20 years ago, where I would walk into the Canada Employment Centre, where the job ads were all on little cards on a bulletin board, and I would ask the staff there if they would please read me the job ads so that I could find work. Obviously, I'm blind too. And they wouldn't. I'd write to the minister and ask if the minister could please instruct his staff to provide this service so that more blind people would have work. You'd think everybody would be in favor of that, and the minister wouldn't take action. So my case went as far as the Federal Court of Canada before I finally won. I had to represent myself there because uh, I didn't have the money to hire a lawyer, and the government sent two lawyers to oppose me. So. I simply don't know what the problem is with government, but perhaps if more members of the public who are not disabled would stand beside us and stand up for us and recognize that our needs are valid and deserve to be respected, then the governments which all of us, disabled and non-disabled, elect, might be more willing to provide the disabled people with better service. Thanks very much. Just a few thoughts from you, our listeners, about lawyer David Lepofsky's latest human rights complaint against the TTC. One of you called for a conversation with Howard Moscow. He's on the line to offer the TTC's perspective on how they are accommodating or failing to do so, the visually impaired, on the system. Mr. Moscow, good morning. Hi, good morning. What's the problem been? David Lepofsky waited 10 years to get action on the subways, and now he's being stonewalled on the buses. Why? Can you help us? not being stonewalled. In fact, it's our intention to have full compliance of this within this year. Uh, what we've and we're trying to strike a balance between that and complaints we have from have had from riders. Uh, since the subway ads went in, we had a number of complaints. Uh, this may sound silly, but the most persistent complaint is that the sound of the announcements wake people up and they like to sleep on the subway. Oh, too bad. I know that. I mean, really, tell them to take a walk. <laughs> uh, now, I, I, you uh, haven't explained we... why it took ten years. All it takes 
The day that David Leposky made his point and the Human Rights Commission was heard from was an instruction to the drivers to start announcing the stops. Why would it have taken 10 years, and why can't it happen tomorrow on the buses? Well, there's no excuses. It shouldn't have taken 10 years. And why can't it happen tomorrow? Why this year? You say this year. Well, why it, can't it, as of tomorrow it, it start? It happened on the subway. Mm -hmm. We are installing a talking bus. It's being tested on Bayview Avenue. It's our intention to have the system rolled out within the year, within, within a matter of months, uh, every vehicle in the TTC will be outfitted with a talking bus uh, fueled by GPS. The, the announcements will then be consistent throughout the entire system uh, and fully comply with the Human Rights Commission. What we've done in the interim is told our drivers, you must announce major intersections or major streets and on request of anyone who enters the vehicle, and they all enter uh, the vehicle from the front, um, the driver will announce any stops that are requested. No. Leposky had a problem with that. He says it's frequently they forget, and he doesn't know it, and he misses his stop. So why can't the driver announce every stop? We were wondering yesterday if the drivers raised an objection against this. Well, the, the objections have come from that end, and the reason, and the reason they've come is that uh, we are faced with a position of having to discipline any driver who doesn't comply. Uh, and uh, we're expecting or anticipating some resistance from drivers. It creates a major administrative hassle. I, I know it's not an excuse, and I know the Commission, uh, faced with uh, the prospect of, uh, uh, of the options, basically decided on the policy that we have. Do you have any idea what lawyers did cost over the decade that Mr. Lepofsky was appealing? Um, no. I mean, it, it, it does seem scandalous, doesn't it? It, it would have taken uh, ten years. It's, it, you're right. It's difficult to defend, and I can't really defend it. By when again will these talking buses be operational? By the end of this year. By the end of this year. They, they're already on the Bayview route. We've pilot, we've pilot testing them. Uh, from the technology point of view, they seem to be working well now. Uh, it's only a matter of time before we yeah, roll it up. That, that's still 12 months in between now and then. You can't simply order the drivers because they might protest, and then you have to discipline them, so we won't ask them in the first place. No. Uh, the, well, as I said, the commission attempted to strike a balance that the drivers will announce every major intersection. Uh, and on request, the spots in between. We thought that was a reasonable position. Mr. Moscow, thank you. You're welcome. Howard Moscow is the chair of the TTC and the city councilor for Ward 15, Eglinton Lawrence. Having heard both sides, if you want to be heard from again, the Vox Box number is 416-205-5807.